What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're finding this content useful, please go ahead and do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. All right, so moving right along, I wanted to take a moment to talk about embedding chord track metadata, or rather chords that are embedded into audio events into audio loops that we export in Studio One. So if we take a look at this song over here, you'll note that we have a chord track, a global chord track, and you'll also note that the chord track information that is sitting in this audio event is matching here. And this is because I have this option enabled, show chords on events. If this was disabled, then I wouldn't see it. But because I've embedded this information into this audio event, essentially it's matching. So let's talk about an export workflow that will allow us to embed this information very similar to the way that we can embed tempo information into audio events when we're doing our exports. Okay, so first of all, why would we want to do this? Well, maybe you've created some really cool sounding ambient loops with some really nice basic chord progressions, and you want to be able to use them in the other files or rather other songs. And if the other songs have a different chord track that you want these audio events to be able to follow that chord track. So that's the goal in mind here. Now, full disclosure, we do have a chord track mode that we can instantiate, which is universal, which essentially means that you don't have to detect the chords, but that's for another video. We'll leave that alone for now. Okay, so the idea here is actually pretty simple. The minute you have a WAV file that has chord track metadata embedded, if I attempt to do a drag and drop, you'll notice that we have the audio loop option. So if I use my alter option, I can toggle between these different options, but you'll notice that the little X is enabled where the audio loop is. Now, if I was to go ahead and do that with a regular wave file, you'll notice that that option isn't there. So right off the bat, that's one thing to make note of. The minute you have chord track information that's embedded into an audio event, then when we do a drag and drop, we have the option to export as an audio loop. Now, in order to get the core track information embedded into this file, this is the option that we need to use, audio loop. So let's go ahead, we'll do that export. So now you can see strings.audio loop has, has been exported. We have some embedded tempo information. And in addition to that, although we're currently not seeing it in the browser, this actually has the core track information embedded as well. So let's go ahead now, and I'm actually gonna choose a different version. I really like these new versions. I've been using them a lot. Uh, we won't save our changes. And now we have a new song. Well, it's actually the same song, but what I did is I went ahead and changed the chord track information. And I set this track's follow mode and tune mode ahead of time. So if we think of this like you're working from a production template, maybe you might have certain tracks within your Studio One song that are already set up to accommodate the chord track. So if we now take the same file that we created by dragging and dropping an audio event that had chord metadata embedded into it as an audio loop, then if I was to go ahead and drag this in, you'll see that the chords show up. That is the original chords that were embedded into this file. And because I have my follow mode on, you'll notice if I toggle this off that we don't have any processing that's happening. If I toggle this back on, you'll notice that we have this indication here. Now, Full disclosure, I'm not actually changing any of these chords here. I could, but I'm not changing these chords. So what we're seeing is simply the time stretch icon. But the important thing to note is that this will essentially play now. And if I did something, well, I could do something crazy, like we could change this to a major seventh or something like that, then you'll see that we have, in addition to the time stretch icon, we also have the chord track icon, because this is not only changing this in terms of transposing, but it's also changing the data harmonically. So now we have both of those icons. That's not really what I would wanna do in this particular case, but you get the picture. So the idea here is that if you kinda of wanna future-proof some of the loops that you're creating, if you're creating some cool loops and you wanna be able to use them in other productions, if you go ahead and essentially embed the chord track information from your chord track or do a simple detect chords and edit the boundaries of the chords in the editor, you can go ahead and just do a simple drag and drop, and then you choose the audio loop option, and then the audio loops that you're exporting have automatically embedded the chord track metadata information into that file. 
Now, it's important to note that these could only be used in Studio One, but this is a really, really great production tool in terms of embedding the chord track information into your files so that you can use them in other songs. So anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. If you found this video useful, please go ahead and consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'll do my best to get back to you and we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.